Contrary to the popular pilgrim image, metal buckles didn't become fashionable until the late 1600s. Throughout the 1700s, numerous heads of families became better shoemakers than they were farmers or military men. And by the time of the Revolutionary War, many small shops called ten-footers dotted the village landscapes, such as this replica of the building of Levi and Franklin Keith that once stood on Perkins Avenue in Brockton. And this original structure on the old Mary Baker Eddy residence in Stoughton, a mile north of the Brockton Shoe Museum. The Faxon brothers of Cochato, now called Randolph, pioneered in making shoes for retail store owners in Boston, the first of which was operated by Quincy Reed of Braintree. In 1811, 27-year-old Micah Faxon moved from this home in East Randolph, now Holbrook, to North Bridgewater, now Brockton, and started the first full-fledged shoe factory in a converted house in what is now the center of downtown Brockton. Faxon made his first sale of shoes in the Long Wharf area of Boston and soon became the first to manufacture solely for the Boston wholesale market. Although such marketing trends matured at different rates in different parts of eastern Massachusetts, the genie was out of the bottle. And increasing numbers of producers were committed to making shoes for users they would never see or know. While North Bridgewater was originally known for its production of fine clocks and cast iron shoe tools, by 1830, over half of its male and female workforce was directly involved in making boots and shoes, most of which were sold in the South. Many North Bridgewater families provided light manufacturing services in their homes. For example, the assembly of the various parts of uppers, which are the relatively thin pieces of leather that make up the upper portion of a shoe. This particular home sewing task was gradually phased out after the sewing machine was invented by Elias Howe in 1845. However, Howe's sewing machine and modifications by Singer and others proved to be utterly incapable of performing the most critical operation of attaching uppers to thick leather soles. So both hand pegging and hand sewing methods prevailed in local factories, cottage industries, and ten-footers. For over 20 years, the industry experimented with a myriad of awkward sole joining alternatives, such as the wire tacking and clamping devices of Elisha and Aaron Hobart of Abington, and a grand variety of ineffective automatic wood peggers, none of which approached the craftsmanship in a hand-stitched sole. Finally, in 1858, a mechanized solution that applied the distinct benefits of needle and wax thread was discovered in the areas of Old Abington, now called Rockland and Whitman. The inventor was Lyman Blake. A 23-year-old mechanical genius, Blake made the greatest technological breakthrough in the 3,000-year history of shoemaking when he introduced his unpretentious but powerful sole-fastening instrument. As significant as the silicon chip is in today's computer industry, this user-friendly tool was developed to where it could easily machine sew a heavy sole to a finished upper in less than a minute, literally hundreds of times faster than stitching them by hand. And its ability to apply wax thread meant soles were much stronger and far more resistant to dampness than those held together by wooden pegs. Gordon McKay, a shrewd promoter,